Let's talk about Nick Sheridan for Alabama. Alabama. Obviously, what happened to them in the offseason? Kalen DeVore gets hired. I don't know. Nick Saban retires. I don't know. Tommy Reese is gone. So you got to bring an offensive coordinator. Ryan Grubb goes to Seattle. And not, not Washington, Seattle Seahawks, right? He takes a position there in the NFL. Good for him. He gets to keep his family in Seattle. All that good stuff. Nick Sheridan worked with Kalen DeBoer in two spots. He worked with him in, in Indiana, and he worked with him in Washington. And Indiana fans definitely remember Nick Sheridan. Indiana fans definitely do. You know why? 2020, you had the year with Michael Penix. You're 6-2. and two. You're one of the best offenses in the Big Ten. Michael Penix was like a superstar. The following year, granted, Michael Penix got hurt. But man, that was a, I mean, a historically bad offense. It was terrible. It was so bad that, by the way, Indiana, after going 6-2 and two and having a chance to compete potentially for a Big Ten title spot, which, I mean, I don't know when they've ever done that. And they made it to a bowl game, which they've only done like three times in the last 30 years. The year after was so bad, they fired Nick Sheridan. It was so bad. Yeah, a lot of that had to do with Michael Penix. But Michael Penix, first five games, he was like, he had four touchdowns, seven interceptions. The rumors that he was playing injured and whatnot. But, I mean, I, I don't know that Nick Sheridan's a great recruiter. I don't know. The best recruit that he ever got in was uh, Donovan McCauley, which <laughs> Indiana fans know that name. But it's funny because they didn't recruit him as a wide receiver. They recruited him as a quarterback. And that season, that's one twenty one season, he was, I mean, yeah, he was a freshman, but he was 6'5", 200 with the tools. Just never happened. So I, I guess I don't know, Indiana fans like to blame Nick Sheridan for his lack of development. But then he converted to wide receiver, and he's actually pretty good. He, he's their highest graded offensive player on BFF. So uh, maybe it'll work out for Donovan McCauley. Who knows? But man, I mean, this feels odd. And the thing is, like, you had mentioned this the other day to me, like, the expectation, I think, from, you know, uh, the athletic department there and the agreement between Caleb and the boys, like, all right, we get Grubb. And in that interview, I'm sure it's like, all right, what if Grubb doesn't come? What if he gets the Washington job, right? And I'm, I'm sure that there was a plan, right? And this happened pretty quickly after the whole Grubb news. I just find it very odd that they hired Nick Sheridan to be the offensive coordinator. I find it very odd. And, and the one thing that, like, you could say in that 2021 season is that, like, there were so many different quarterbacks that were playing, and there was just never any adjustments or you didn't tailor anything to the skill sets of the quarterbacks that you had in that room. It just felt like they were running the same stuff over and over again. And that is a huge reason why he got fired. There's a huge reason. Aside from not being able to run the ball, do anything on offense, right? And when you're in Alabama's quarterback room, if you look there, there are a lot of different quarterbacks with a lot of different skill sets. And what Tommy Reese did a really good job of is he realized that he needed to use the skill set of Jalen Moreau differently than he had been using it in the first half of the season, and he did it. And he did it, right? So what happens if there's a quarterback change in Alabama, right? Or Austin Mack is Nick Sheridan's guy, right? And, and he goes with Austin Mack coming out there. What if Dylan Laundergan is is the guy coming out there and he's got a different skill sets from Jalen Moreau? What if Jalen Moreau's the guy? They, they all have different skill sets. If one goes down, like is he going to be able to make the adjustments on the fly, the game plan adjustments, or is he just going to stick to his, his his little play sheet and just roll with that? So I it's not time to panic as a Bama fan, obviously, because it is Kalen DeVore and I trust him a ton. But those lack of offenses, offensive adjustments in the past have me worried just a little bit. For sure. And it's more about losing two elite guys. Ryan Grubb, right, top five offensive coordinator in the country. Scott Huff, right, top five O-line coach in the country. Those are two yeah. massive losses. Going to the NFL, you know, to the Seattle Seahawks, this is tough, right? You can do it. You got to do what you got to do with Nick Sheridan. Roll from within. Keep continuity there. And to be honest, I, I kind of have a feeling – Kalen DeBoer will probably call plays or be very, very involved with that offense, which yeah. he always was with Ryan Grubb. Um, but it's more about keeping that continuity. Worked with him at Indiana and Washington, like you mentioned. So, yeah, I, I, I like this all around. Don't love it, but I also understand where he's coming from. And like you said, I trust Kalen DeBoer. Right, what, what he does, what he thinks is best for the team, I 
I, I think he'll be fine there. And I'm sure, you know, he won't regret this. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned that with it's a very revolving, it's a very weird quarterback room there, right? So like that's why it does have me a little bit worried. And I would love a guy like Ryan Grubb to maximize whoever's playing quarterback out there, because I know he can, you know, can Nick Sheridan do that? I don't know exactly, but I do believe um that Ryan Grubb could, which is that's where I think it's not more about hating on Nick Sheridan. Cause I'm sure he's qualified. I know he's qualified and I know Kellen DeBoer trusts him. So he's qualified. It's more about like what you lose in that replacement from Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff. And also Kellen DeBoer has a ton on his plate as it is. It sucks that he doesn't have two guys like uh, Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff to take some of that load off of him. You know, as being the first time, you know, as head coach first season at Alabama, a lot he has to deal with the next six months before he even plays a football game. Right, so it's it's more about you know keeping that continuity, and, and obviously that's where it worries me a little bit. But also I understand it; they're ready for it. I think Scott Huff hurts maybe a little bit more than Ryan Grubb, more so because I don't know who they're hiring him, and and that O line position is so hard to find a great coach and all that stuff. So, but we'll see. Yeah, Nick Sheridan, Alabama. Yeah, to say that I was shocked would be an understatement. I did not expect this at all. I did not expect this at all. Nick Sheridan. So I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I'm not. I, I guess I'm not. I'm not plugged into the program enough. I guess this feels like a Kalen DeBoer move. You know, to me at least, where it's like, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna take a guy I know, right, and I'm just gonna plug him in because, like, he did that a lot with you know, you saw Kane Womack, right? He did some other things where he, you know, Gillespie and some guys keeping him on staff. Well, it's just. But, He's just bringing back the whole 2019 Indiana staff. Yeah, and the, that staff with with uh, with Bama, which Ross, honestly or... that, that that was a that was a good team. They had Peyton Ramsey and Michael Penix both humming a little bit. Um, I think they won like eight games or something like that. So I, yeah, I guess stick to what you know. Stick to what you know. Something to be said for that. But I, I don't know, man. I I feel really really weird about this. Maybe it's like I don't know, dude. Like Nick Sheridan individually, right? Is he gonna exceed expectations or not? I don't know what the expectations for him are this season. I I really I don't have expectations yet for this team. I do not. You can't future, you can't have an educated guess because you know the team will look so much different. In you have three no months. clue. But what I do know, like, what are the expectations for Alabama's offense? I mean, it's high. I, Jalen Moreau was, what, seventh in Heisman voting? Fifth? Yeah. Like, you've had Jalen Moreau, who was top ten Heisman voting as a quarterback. Bryce Young, who won the Heisman. You had Mac Jones. You had Tua Tagovailoa. You had Jalen Hurts. I mean, you have just had, you've just pumped out productive offenses after productive offenses after productive offenses with great offensive coordinators. Now, we Bama fans will beg to defer on the Bill O'Brien thing, but dang it, it was Alabama's first quarterback to ever win Heisman. Yeah, and also, like, Bryce you, Young. you think he's a bad coach? Ryan Day wanted him, too, right? Ryan, it was Ryan Day's first choice at OC, so. Yeah, so good there. Steve Sarkeesian, good. Uh, you have Lane Kiffin was good there. I don't know, man, I... There's, there are high expectations. Like, those guys are all head coaches elsewhere right now. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Is the expectation that Nick Sheridan exceeds the expectations at Alabama? Or, sorry, is the expectation for Nick Sheridan that he does his fantastic job and gets a head coaching gig somewhere else? I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at past all-time top commits. I mean... I don't know that he has a giant recruiting history here, so we'll we'll see where that ends up. And granted, he hasn't needed Kalen DeBoer hasn't needed to recruit at the level that you know Alabama recruits at his whole career, and he still wins. But I I, I give this like a, a C plus, dude. I, I think there were I don't know. I trust Kalen DeBoer. I trust Kalen DeBoer. Is Nick basically the expectation for an Alabama offensive coordinator is to get a head coaching gig somewhere else? That's what it is. Yeah. Is Nick Sheridan going to get a head coaching gig somewhere else at a power five school? I don't know that we'll he see. is. 
So I, I'll, I'll say see. this does not meet expectations. I'll give it a C plus. The thing I do like about it, though, is he has experience calling plays, right, as offense coordinator, and he has experience coaching quarterbacks, right? So that, to me, you're not only just promoting your tight end coach, yeah, and promoting and former offense coordinator. His coach. highest I rated quarterback that he coached is now playing wide receiver. I get that. I get that. But also, like, it was nice to have a guy on staff that he trusts and that has experience in that position. Recruiting, we will see. We'll see with that whole staff. I believe in DeBoer and that defense staff for sure. And I believe in, right, those guys. I'm sure DeBoer will be able to recruit offenses because, you know, why would you not want to play in his offense? But we will see. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree with you that this doesn't make me excited. But I do think it was a tough spot. And I don't know if he'll be there next year, but I do know that, you know, it it sucks to lose Ryan Grubb and Scott Huff. So what what grade you get? Go B minus. No oh, no 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 no. I'm gonna go C plus. Expectation way too high to be able to come close to meeting that. That's what I'm saying. Like the, the you're telling like the expectations for an Alabama offense coordinator is to get a head coaching job at a Power Five school in the next couple of years. I don't yeah. think that that this happens with Nick Sheridan. But. Alas, I've been proven wrong many a times before. So I'd love to hear what you people in the comments think of Nick Sheridan, but I'm just laying it out for you how I see it, right? And, you know, what does my perspective mean for the program of Alabama? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a exactly a Nick Sheridan connoisseur, per se. But, man, I, I was shocked. I was shocked. 